Well, I'm going to show you how to calculate the future value of an investment. If you had a lump sum that you planned on investing for a number of years and you had a somewhat of an idea of what the interest rate was going to be, there's a quick and easy method to actually determine what the future value of that investment will actually be. Uh, there's an equation that you can use that I will show you and kind of walk you through the steps that you would go through to calculate ultimately what that future value would be. There's a few things that we need to know first before we can even get to that point though. Uh, the first obviously is we need to know what we call our present value, uh, which is the current value of our investment. So let's say that we have $5,000 that we want to invest in some type of investment. The next thing we need to know is roughly what interest rate we would receive. Now this might be difficult to determine, especially if you're not utilizing a particular instrument that has a set interest rate, maybe it fluctuates somewhat, obviously like stock returns, very difficult to calculate, uh, but you can get sort of an idea on ultimately what is the general rate of return you would receive from some type of investment. So for the sake of this example, let's go ahead and assume that we're going to earn 8% compounded annually on our $5,000 investment. Uh, the interest rate would be abbreviated as little i, and we're going to say that is 8% percent. And the last thing we need to know is roughly how long do we plan on actually investing our $5,000 earning 8% interest compounded annually. Um, I'm going to show this in years because it's easier to calculate. If you were to break this down into months, we would actually have to alter the interest rate because obviously we wouldn't expect our our investment to actually compound at 8% on a monthly basis, uh, but we're going with years. And so for the sake of this example, let's assume that we're going to invest that for three years into our particular uh, instrument or investment here. Uh, so what we need to figure out, obviously, is what is going to be the future value of our investment. And that we really don't know at this point. Uh, so there's a brief equation or a quick equation that we can utilize to actually calculate this. And what that is, is FV equals PV, which is the present value, multiplied by 1 plus our interest rate to the nth power. And so simply what we do is actually plug in the existing information that we have. We know our present value, of course, is $5,000. And we have 1 plus our interest rate of 0 0.08. The reason it's 0 0.08 and not 8% is we need to actually convert that into decimal form, which I've already done. And then N, we know that we have three years we are going to be investing uh, this particular money at. Uh, and so 1.08 to the third power is actually 1.259712. And we're simply going to take that and we're going to multiply that by our original investment of 5,000. And if you do that, that actually gets you $6,298.56. And and so that would essentially be what our future value is. And so the way you would use this in a sentence is if we were to invest $5,000 today uh, for three years, earning 8% interest compounded annually, we would have $6,298.56 at the end of those three years. Now, there's a couple of assumptions that are made here. The first of which is that the interest rate is going to be fairly consistent. So obviously, if we're not earning 8%, if we're earning 5, if we're earning 10, that's going to throw off the end result. Uh, so expect some fluctuation there because rarely are interest rates, do they stay the same unless you're investing in maybe a savings account or something that's fairly, fairly stable. The second assumption here uh, is that we're not going to be investing additional monies into this particular investment over a period of time. For this example, what we're doing is simply investing that $5,000 and letting it grow without adding anything extra to it. If we were to make additional payments on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, annual basis, whichever the case may be, that obviously will throw out the future value, so it would essentially be higher. Uh, and there's a separate way that you can calculate that uh, that I will provide another video over. So hopefully this helps you calculate the future value of an investment. As I said before, we're looking at simply a lump sum and allowing that to accrue over time.